If you need a SQL Server database in order to practice, develop, learn, teach, it can be a bit of a hassle to have to set up an entire instance of SQL Server on your local computer or even create a virtual machine for SQL Server. Now I do have videos on this channel where I show you how to do just that, set up a virtual machine for SQL Server practice. And if you're doing a lot of practice, that makes a lot of sense. But what if you don't have a Windows machine or you don't want to set that up? What if you want to just connect up to a SQL Server database, do some development work, play around a little bit, and then be done with it? Well, Azure can allow you to do that through a SQL Server database object that's only about five or six dollars a month in order to play around with it. Now, this, came, this video came about as a response to a question from one of the subscribers. I was asked, hey, you know what, I don't use Windows, I'm using an Android device, and I need to connect up to a SQL Server database. Is there any way that I can do that? And the answer is yes, that's what this video is all about. Let's go have a look. I'm going to create a SQL Server database using Azure, and there are many different data sources that I can create. So if I go in to create uh, data sources or databases here, you'll notice there's a number of different choices I have. It's beyond the scope of this video to go and uh, and create multiple resources and, and to talk about the differences between all the resources. I just want to create a SQL database in Azure that I can use for developing an application or maybe a very small application that I want to make sure works with the SQL database based in a cloud. So when I go to create that database, I'm using my subscription that I have as a student and I can create a resource group or use an existing resource group. I'm going to create a new resource group. I'll call it YouTube. So YouTube demo. And uh, so we'll say OK to that. That's going to be my new resource group. And within that resource group, it's going to say, what do you want to call the database? And I'll call it uh, likes for Frank. So hopefully there's lots of likes. If, if you haven't hit the like button, has a little bit on the nose. Now with the server, I can create a new server here. And when I create a new server, you create a name. I'm not really going to manage this server. It kind of sits underneath the database and runs it. It just has to have one that ex exists. So I'll call this subscribe, right? So we have a database there called subscribe. And I'm going to put in my username and I'll put in a password. I didn't integrate that with Active Directory. That's fine. I'm just going to have it here. And I'm going to use the US East as my location for this server. I have a lot of different choices, but I'll just take the default there. And now it's going to create a server there in order to support this database. Now, by default, it's going to give me a Gen 5, two virtual cores, 32 gigs of storage. Um, that's going to be a pretty powerful database. So I don't want that database. It's going to be a couple hundred dollars a month if I had that database. That might be sufficient if I'm running a point of sale system or an actual production or multiple developers, but it's a little bit much here for me. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the configure of that database. And underneath here, you'll notice that it's the service tier is general purpose, but I'm actually going to drop this down to basic. So basic is really good for studying. It's good for learning. It's good for developing it's a very small database in here. It's only seven. It's less than $7 a month. So this is Canadian as well. So it's like $5 or something US. So I'm just going to have this little database. It's going to allow me to do things like maybe I'll practice learning how to code TSQL or I'll practice learning how to create tables, whatever I need to learn. So that's going to be much less expensive. So I'm not going to worry about backups and all that sort of stuff. Um, so you can go in there and, and, and determine what you'd like there. I'll go to my networking. Networking, I could have no access, which seems weird, but it's if I'm just going to use it within Azure. So if I create a virtual network in Azure, then I'm not allowing any external access to it. It's just internal to the Azure environment that I've created. I could create a public endpoint. So let's say, for example, it's a little web app and I want to store data in there. And then I want to have... Um, my friends test it from different places, or a private endpoint. In my case, I'm going to choose a public endpoint, and it's going to say, well, who do you want to allow to go in there? So I'll allow Azure services themselves to go in there in case I want to use any of them, and I'm going to add the current client IP address. So what this has done is Azure has now determined what my public address is, and it has added that as a firewall rule, saying that that address is allowed to access this SQL server. This is important because if I create this at school, 
it's going to find the public address that my school is using and add that into the Azure firewall. If I do this at home, it's going to add my home public address. So if for some reason you lose connectivity, something's not quite working, what you can do is go to a website called www what's my IP and it will tell you what your public address is and then you can go into the Azure firewall and add it in. So that just makes sure that not everybody can access it. Uh, so underneath here, you know, I have a connection policies in there. I'm not doing a lot here around security. I just want to demonstrate this. Obviously, if this is going to be production or have sensitive information, there is more to security. So underneath here, I'm not going to add in any Azure Defender in there. And I'm going to go in and now I have a choice here with a data source. Either I leave it just as a blank database or I could actually grab a backup that I have. So I could grab a backup. So I could select a backup that I might have, but I'm actually going to grab a sample database of the AdventureWorks uh, LT lightweight uh, database in there. And I'm going to use that as a, as a way of playing around with it. So I'll have some data in there and then I'll just take the collation order. Tags really won't come into play unless I have a lot of Azure resources and I want to be able to group them and find them. So now I just review it. I can download a template. If this is something that I think I need to deploy on a regular basis, maybe I'm practicing something that's fine, but I'm just going to go ahead and create it. It's going to go through and deploy it. It takes a little while to do that. Okay. So my deployment's complete and I'm now going to go to the resource. Now, a few things you'll notice on the resource here is that it actually has the, re the name here. So this is what I'm going to use, the string that I can use to connect to the resource here. I can copy this to the clipboard and now I can use this if I'm going in and say using SQL Server Management Studio or a command line or programmatically looking to connect to this particular database. At which point you might be saying, hey Frank, you just created a resource and put it in a YouTube video. We're going to go visit that resource. Well, two things. One, my IP address is the only one that's permitted through the firewall at Azure. And two, right after this demo, I'm going to delete this resource. So you'd be taking your journey to nowhere. But anyways, so the idea behind this is that I have this resource here. Let's go and connect up to it. I'll use uh, SQL Server Management Studio. Okay, so I've opened up SQL Server here and I'm just going to paste in the uh, name there, the subscribe.database windows. I'm going to put in my password here. I can remember it if I want, but I'm going to be getting rid of this resource in a moment anyways. But we go here. I'm going into the cloud-based VM. I'm using SQL Server authentication, connecting up, bring in my SQL Server Management Studio window, and here we go. And you can see I've got my databases. This is all likes for Frank up here. And if I go in here, I can see that I have a, it's populated with the AdventureWorks tables in here. So you can see I've got, you know, my AdventureWorks database in there. If I go in here and we'll pop in uh, maybe the first 200 rows here, I'll just do a quick query for me. And then I'll see that I have some data that's located in here. Again, it's a pretty, uh, pretty low end database here, but it's perfect for practice. Well, I hope I answered that subscriber's question and they're able to use this as a way of doing the work that they want to do. And I hope that everybody else who watched the video also benefit from it. Uh, typical like and subscribe and all that sort of good stuff. And we'll see you in the next video.